Can I ask you something? Sure, go ahead. I think this is a new thing. You went to visit Remy in the library the other day, alright? How did you know that? I was there. Remy told me about everything. What do you mean, everything? Amelia. Oh. Oh, that's their friend. Why did he tell you about all that? He's dealing with a lot of stuff, it seems. Well, he isn't the only one. I actually want to talk with him again. But if he doesn't respond, then I can't do anything either. Let's see. I guess I remind him too much of her. If he knew what I know, I'm not sure what he would do. Okay, what's that? When she got sick, I often visited her. I just wanted to check up on her and take a little of the edge off, considering what she was going through at work. The night she died, I was actually with her. I stayed with her until pretty late, but as I had to work the next day, I eventually left. It was late enough, and I told her to take it easy. She told me that she was just going to finish up one little thing before getting some much needed sleep. But only after I left did she realise that she'd run out of her medication and went out to get the refill. If she just told me, or if I paid more attention than noticed, I could have gotten it to her, and none of this would have happened. That's not even the worst of it. When she died, she... She was pregnant. Fuck's sake. Okay. They had already made so many plans, and I expected them to announce their engagement any day. Does Remy not know she was pregnant? He doesn't, or at least, I think he doesn't. They couldn't talk to each other much, as they kept their relationship a secret. It's not exactly something she'd want to mention in just a few sentences. If he knows, then it certainly wasn't from her telling him about it. I see. And if he doesn't know, please don't tell him. Fine. I know it must have been much harder for him than it was for me, but that doesn't mean I got out of it unscathed. I lost my best friend. I blamed myself for a long time. I guess I still do. How could I face him, knowing that I could have averted the tragedy so easily? I think his own feelings aren't that different. How so? He also blames himself for not being with her when it happened. Because they had to keep their relationship a secret. Yep. I see. That must be horrible for him. I think he still hasn't gotten over it, to be honest with you. I wish I could help him. I really do. What did you do after it all happened? For a while, I just felt guilty. But eventually, I realised there are those who have it much worse than myself. I decided to take what I had experienced to turn it into something positive, and that's when I started volunteering at the orphanage. Why just let tragedies be tragedies if I could do something to help? I share the same sentiment. How so? I came here hoping that I could help humanity. Maybe you're not just helping humanity. Okay, that should do it. How does that feel? We've fixed up a bandage. Much better. Maybe this, I can start practicing again in a day or two. Just be safe. Of course. Thanks for coming at any rate, and you're welcome. I'll leave you to recuperate now, and maybe I'll see you another time. Sure thing. Bye bye. <laughs> what are we up to now? Chapter 5. Oh, what ending are we going to get this time? I'm going to skip through to the options and then see what we get. After a night of turbulent dreams, my consciousness returned to the shores of the waking world. Today's the day of the big fireworks, who shall I bring? We got Remy! Is it going to be the good or the bad ending? Let's find out. That must be him. How are you doing Remy? You ready to see the fireworks? You betcha. My body is ready. Yes. Okay, let's go. After a few minutes of walking, we arrived at a rather empty looking area near the edge of town. Looks deserted. I thought everyone was going to be watching the fireworks. They are, but they're doing it somewhere else. I don't really like the crowds, and I think you'd appreciate me leading you here if you knew what they were like. Better safe than sorry, at any rate. That's what I'm thinking. This reminds me a bit of the night I arrived here. Everything was dark and empty, and it was just us walking through the landscape. Yeah, you're right. Oh, it's starting. Have a look. We were quiet as we waited in the stillness of the night enveloped us. Soon, I heard the sound of the first rocket making its way into the night sky, after which it exploded into a pattern of colours. More rockets followed, their thunderous noise echoing throughout the land. And there's your fireworks, and shit's about to go down. So, enjoy this moment, because it's the last moment of peace we're going to get. <laughs> Suddenly, a terrible realisation hit me. Considering how public of an event this was, and how I was told multiple times that everyone would be watching the fireworks, Now's the best time for Reza to do anything that he planned to do. Not only is the village basically deserted, but the sounds of the fireworks would also overshadow any gunshots. 
giving him as much security as he would ever have. As the portal had been repaired by the mysterious person I met, now is the perfect time for Reza to make his getaway and I was the only one who knew. Remy, we gotta go now. What's up? I know where Reza is, gotta stop him. Shouldn't we call the police or something? No time. I'm not sure if I could fight him. You're right, if you're there, he probably won't even hesitate to shoot. <laughs> Maybe you can hold him off and I'll try and get some help. Okay, let's do that. Go, go, go. I started running as Remy's voice called out to me. Where is he? Where do I go? Go to the portal. He'll be there. Come on, Remy. Look after yourself. <laughs> I arrived at the portal just a few minutes later. I couldn't help but be glad that it was still turned off and didn't appear to have been used recently, but it meant that Reza was still here somewhere. I looked around, thinking about where he could be or if it was worth waiting for him here when I saw something at the corner of my eye. There was a suitcase leaning against the portal. When I opened it to check its contents, I was surprised to find a few eggs inside. I had no doubt that this was Reza's doing. Apparently, he'd broken into the hatchery again, stashing the eggs here, but he hadn't used the portal yet. Why? Given that he hadn't left yet, he clearly still had unfinished business in the area. The underground building, the administrator told me about the prowess of the generators within. It probably hadn't been hard for Reza to guess the same, or to try stealing them from a place he knew would be more deserted than the rest of the village was right now. He also didn't have far to go from the portal. All things considered, it was the only option that made sense to me. I could have waited for Reza here, but in the end I decided it would be better to meet him underground. If there was going to be a confrontation, I was sure I'd have the advantage in a more crowded space. Even in the darkness, it was easy for me to spot the site where they'd unearthed the building's entry as it was roped off in the area that I'd seen from afar before. Here we go. When I entered the building, I was met by a long illuminated hallway that was lined with doors on both sides. Since the lights were already on, Reza had to be very close. I wasn't surprised at the building still having electricity since its generators were also powering the portal. Suddenly, one of the doors opened and out came Reza carrying a large cardboard box. When he spotted me, he set it on the ground. Yo yo, glad to see ya. I want to talk with you for so long. I even tried to contact you, but I couldn't with someone telling you the whole time. But talking can wait. Now you're here, we've got everything. Let's get out of here. Nope. No? What are you talking about? I ain't doing nothing until you answered a few questions of mine. You want to talk now? Sure, why not? We've probably got a few hours if you wanted to. None of them would disturb us here. We could even get the backup generator as well after we send this one over. Okay, when did you realise that we were in the past? How did you know about the comet? I've known for a while. It's what I wanted to talk to you about when we met at the portal. How about you? I only found out recently. Looking back, it's obvious to me now. I'm not sure exactly how you figured it out, but there are so many damn clues when you think about it. I mean, how could a supposedly completely different independent civilization speak the same language as us? What was this supposed to be? An alternate reality? No, it's just a different time. When was there ever anything resembling these creatures on Earth? It's not hard to make the jump from dragons to dinosaurs when some of them here look pretty damn near identical to dinosaurs that we know about. And then there are also the prehistoric fruits, the plants, and the fact their technological level is nearly exactly the same as our own past society. Well, we don't even have to think that abstract. Just look at the sky. The sun, the moon, and even the stars are the same. Constellations change over time, of course, but you know that we could account for that stuff. Just point the PDA at the sky and it would have told you the time period, including the imminent threat of being eradicated. You could even see the meteorite in the sky and how it would change its position day after day. Okay, you're done being condescending. I guess so. You killed the dragons, Reza. What a brilliant deduction, Sherlock. Okay, so why? Do you want me to spell it out? I thought better of you. After I found out the truth about the place, I knew waiting for the generators we were owed was not an option anymore. It would have taken who knows how long, but I didn't intend to stay a day longer than necessary. You wouldn't believe how hard it was for me to acquire some generators. Some of the dragons didn't go down easy. But who cares that they got the generators back our stole? With just this one, we won't need any of the others. Yeah, so normally I get this script when it's a bad ending, so this might not end well. Okay, how could I do this? Let me ask you this, what harm is there in taking the generators when the whole civilization will be gone in a few weeks anyway? The ones I killed just died a little earlier than scheduled. Even if that creep hadn't shown up and interrupted our meeting, we wouldn't have had the time for them to make the generators for us. Okay, how about we don't let them die then? They're not going to be extinct anytime soon, if that's what you're concerned about. I paid the hatchery another visit before I came here. Yeah, I found them. They're gonna... He's, he wants to make them 
these personal war machines not good. It's not as bad as you might think. I ain't gonna just abandon them like that, only for their whole civilization to be wiped out. Get your priorities straight, mate. <laughs> Next you'd rather starve because you suddenly empathize with a stake. And you're not satisfied with just starving yourself. No, you're gonna let all of us starve because you wanna impose your morals on everybody else. Since when do you think that you get to have any say in this? You know why you're here, and what you're proposing is treason, and you know the consequences for that. Personally, I don't mind if you want to stay here. You know I don't care about corporal punishment. Let me through, do what you want. No can do. I see how it is. They've told you they need this generator to stop the comment, haven't they? And now you've become their lackey. Don't tell you you've been drinking up what they've been telling you. You know they have m as much of a vested interest in this whole thing as humanity does, that I and you, or at least used to. Do you think they wouldn't do the same thing if it was their families on the line instead of ours? Their entire world is on the line. They live in perfect harmony with their perfect green energy source and no reason for wars or conflicts. Yada yada yada. We had that too. And you know what happened then? Of course you do. This is such an idiotic trope, you know. Random person meets weird natives, learns their ways and ends up saving them. What do they need you for? Maybe they're going to be extinct for a reason if they can't even save themselves. Okay, you know of our suffering but you'll let them have it. I don't give a shit what happens to them, but unlike you, I was at least trying to save humanity. At any cost. We have the solution right here, and you want to get philosophical now, don't you think we deserve it? They've had it for who knows how long. Now it's our turn. Not like this. Do you think I like it? If there was a different way, I wouldn't have spent the last few weeks doing what you didn't. We don't live in this fairy tale world of yours where it's going to be a perfect solution to everything. You should know that. Just being here for a few weeks must have messed you up. I think I know why. You got too used to all the comforts they have here. You actually don't care at all if they die back home, do you? As long as you stay here, in this perfect little world of yours, you've discarded everything and everyone back home and replaced it with this. Maybe it's because you don't have a life back home. I can even understand that a little. Of course it would be nice just to stay here when they have everything that we don't, but being here has also reminded me of everything I hated about our world as it used to be. The pettiness and the politics. Say about the solar flare what you want, but it levelled the playing field and gave people like us a chance to make a difference. For all our efforts, what did we get? A vote that was meaningless in the sea of stupidity and lies. Now everyone has to pull their own weight, we make the rules. You, of all people, should understand it. Of course they wouldn't, they haven't experienced how it is to live like we do now, to see the world burn and everyone around die around you. And because I have, I ain't gonna let that happen to them. How many do you think died back home in just the two weeks you've been here? because you didn't have the power for the hospital. Do you think those victims aren't worth mentioning? Or do you just care about the few dragons I killed? Our city is the last bastion of civilized society in a world where nothing else is left. Maybe you've forgotten about them, but I haven't. How many of us do you think will be there in a month or a year? Or are they just a statistic to you? Same could be said for the dragons. What do you want me to do? Talk me down for this? Then what? It's too late. You think they're gonna just let us go after what I've done? No chance. Whatever you may think, you'll find that our leaders back home agree with my course of action. Okay, why are you telling me that? Because I expect you to join me. Not gonna happen. And you call yourself an ambassador? This generator is the only thing we need for our city to survive. How can you even argue about this? The dragons also need that generator, and I'll do what's necessary to stop you if I have to. So that makes you judge, jury, and executioner. What a wonderful set of morals you have there. We only need to wait until the comet has passed safely. You think you can stop the comet, and you need the generator to do that? Sure, if your plan fails, not only is this world gone, but we'll lose any and all hope to save our own. We're so close, we can't risk anything by waiting for your crazy plan, when back home there are people dying by the minute, I won't let you. You only want to save your own two-faced hide, because you don't want to face the consequences of what you did. He's a crazy man. Why are you laughing, you crazy man? Must be a joke, it must be. I'm the one with the gun, and you thought you could just waltz in here and lecture me. Listening to you is fun and all, but the grown-ups must get back to work now. I mean, what are you gonna do? You can't stop me anyway. Maybe I can. Here comes Maverick. Suddenly, Maverick and Remy appeared next to me. Remy doesn't look very comfortable in this situation. You planned this, didn't you? Traitor. And to think I let you distract me with such a cheap trick, just because I thought there was still a shred of humanity within you. Here comes the gun. He pulled out his gun, not sure which one of us you should be aiming at. Let me go, and I'll forget this thing ever happened. You got six bullets for three people. 
Do you really think you can do that, Riza? Do you think it's worth risking your life for? I've been risking my life for every day in the last two weeks. What did you do during that time? Sip champagne in your nice apartment? And this time we had meatballs, so that's alright. Besides, this generator and the whole building came from our time. They belong to humanity. Suddenly, the administrator came out of the shadows in the hallway behind Reza. There she is. Nah, they belong to me, mate. Confused, Reza spun around, aiming his gun at the newcomer who was slowly walking towards him. Who the fuck are you? Freeze. Do you want to waste your bullets on me? Feel free. Can't stop all of us. If you say so. Bam. <laughs> He pulled the trigger, and the administrator fell to the ground with a dull thud that knocked her mask off. Yeah, she's getting shot all the time. Oh man. Okay, mortified by our display before me, I found myself unable to move as the events of the following seconds unfolded before my eyes. Oh shit! Reza was quick with the gun and shot Remy once before Maverick could charge him. Oh. Bam! Maverick pounced, snarling, and knocked Reza to the ground before embedding his teeth into the body before him. Despite his thrashing and screaming, Reza managed to find his target and pulled the trigger twice. Immediately, the jaws dislodged. Reza pulled himself a few feet away, while Maverick's body convulsed uncontrollably. Oh my god! Why you gotta be so graphic? Oh man. Holding his bleeding wound and breathing heavily, Reza looked at me. You're not gonna help me, are you? Then it's futile. Oh shit, he raised his gun, aiming at me while I regained my composure and tried to run. A single gunshot resounded through the hallway. As soon as I heard it, a sharp pain shot through my back. I fell to the ground immediately. He continued pulling the trigger, but no more bullets came. After a few seconds of silence, I slowly turned around. Yeah, I hope you're dead, seriously. <laughs> Reza was leaning against the wall, his head slumped forward lifelessly. Maverick, you dead. <laughs> and yeah, she's dead as well. Is it Izumi? Is that her name? Maverick and the administrator, both lying in a pool of their own blood, were not moving. I crawled over to Remy and was glad to hear him breathing. He'd been hit in the side and I saw blood trickling from the wound into the ground below him. He raised his head, looking at me with an expression of pain. You're wounded. So are you gotta stop that bleeding. I put some pressure on his wound, momentarily haunting the blood that was trickling down his body. Can you do this? Let me try. He felt around his side, trying to get the right grip before he applied pressure on his own. I let go, and after a bit of adjustment, Remy could stop the bleeding on his own for now. I took off my shirt, and briefly considered whether I would be able to use it to dress Remy's wound, but I soon realised that it was not long enough to wrap around him properly. Besides, if he couldn't walk for now, it would not make a difference anyway, and he would have to stay here while he held the wound shut. Instead, I used the shirt to curb my own bleeding, folding it and wrapping it around my abdomen tightly. Look, Reza's gone, and that other person. What? They walked out? What? Remy's right, both Reza and the administrator are gone. Oh shit! You gotta go, go stop him. I need to find you some help first, I can't leave you like this. Oh, don't you dare tell me you'll be doing me any favours by saving me. If it's just going to be one of us, I don't want it to be me. You don't know how it is to live every day as I have, always wondering if the pain will ever stop or if things will ever change again. And when they finally do, you come along and tell me this, don't do that to me. I'm not going through this again. Okay, what do you want me to do then? This is bigger than us, bigger than me, just go. Go and stop Reza. Okay. Oh shit, i got to leave Remy. Reza's on the loose, still. Even though he got bitten, I hobbled to my feet and made my way back outside. In the distance, near the portal, I saw Reza and something that was standing in between them. As I drew nearer, I recognised it as Vara who was growling at him. Shit girl, Reza aimed a kick at her, only to lose his balance and fall when she bit and held onto his shin. Little ankle biter, as it get him. After he fought her off with a few kicks, his hand dove into his pocket to grab a few bullets, which he proceeded to load into his revolver. Oh shit. I went as fast as I could, but with my injuries I had no chance to stop him as he aimed at Vara. What the fuck? Uh, slowly, he got up again and walked over to the portal's controls, where the administrator suddenly appeared behind him. Blam! Immediately she is on him, throwing him to the ground before starting to pound his head with her fists. 
Together, they rolled down the slope of the small hill on which the portal stood. When they came to a halt, the fight resumed. There was a flurry of fists, and suddenly, I heard the distinct sound of a gunshot, after which the administrator slumped and fell. Eventually, I arrived, only to be able to confirm that both of them were dead. He killed the child! What the fuck?! I went up to the portal and examined Vara for any signs of life. None. What? When I looked up again, I saw Remy looking at me with a pained expression. I stepped away, giving him some space as he stepped up to the small corpse. That's fucking heartbreaking, man. What the hell? Oh, uh, what? Were you looking for me? Did you sneak out again, you poor girl? He enveloped her as his tears started raining down on the small body. Oh, that is brutal. What the hell? Soon, more help arrived. Remy and I got all the medical attention we needed. Besides, though, we already knew to be dead, it was also too late for Maverick. I warned them about the comet, telling them to check the PDAs I'd given them for verification of my claims. A few minutes later, EMTs arrived and I was put into an artificial coma due to my injuries. In the weeks I was out, a variety of things happened. After everything that had taken place, negotiations were fierce between humanity and the dragons. Out of respect, Reza's body was returned to humanity through the portal. While his actions had shattered all goodwill on the dragon's side, Reza's wounds did their job to do the same for humanity. I too was to be returned to humanity, but as my condition didn't allow it, humanity took the dragon's refusal to transfer me as a sign that they were keeping me as a hostage. I wasn't a priority for humanity though, a fact I was aware of well before I ever arrived in this world. As far as they were concerned, Reza and I had our chance, and the results weren't pretty. Ultimately, the dragons decided to return the PDAs before all contact was cut. Luckily, my claims were taken seriously, and there was already a plan in place to divert the comet. While they would have to use the lab's generators to do it, humanity decided to use their portal's power source to support their slowly failing city for a while longer as they looked for other, more long-term solutions. After I awoke from my coma, I had to consider my options. While the dragons were able to create a new power source for the portal, I wouldn't have known how to send myself back to humanity, as their portal was already deactivated, at least not without the expertise of the dead administrator. The only coordinates remaining in the portal were those left as a last resort. It turned out they were to send someone back in time to the day I arrived. As soon as I could, I met with Remy, who told me about everything I'd missed. Back in Tatsu Park, isn't it? So, the comet's been diverted, and you've replaced the power source for the portal. I guess I must have been gone for a long time. For a few weeks, yeah. What are you going to do now? I could use the portal to return to the day of my arrival. After all, I came here to save our dying city, which is something I failed to do. But you saved us. That's true, but I can't help thinking that there could have been a diplomatic solution if I just hadn't been in the coma during the negotiations. Whatever you want to do now, you can be sure that you have the council's support. You could just stay here if you wanted to. I bet you wouldn't mind that, would ya? <laughs> you know how I am. Humans fascinate me. This isn't just about me, though. Of course, I'd love it if you stayed with us, but I know there are many other factors that play here, and it won't be an easy decision for you to make. Don't let me stop you from going back if that's what you want to do, though. I'll be fine. Are you sure about that? Yeah, after all, I'm not alone anymore. In the last few weeks, i spent a lot of time with the Dean, and I say we're pretty good friends now. As sad as it is what happened with Vara, there is another girl at the orphanage we've been taking care of pretty often. Maybe you've seen her. Her name's Emily, and she's just the sweetest little girl. Besides, if you really end up going back in time, I'll see you again. Oh my god, that ending though. Why? Why would you kill the kids? <laughs> oh man. But yeah, that was... Yeah, that was one of Remy's endings. I don't know if that was the good or the bad one just yet. It doesn't tell you until you've got to the end of the credits. But yeah, that was that was a pretty punchy ending. And I'm sure I'll be back for more. But for now, this is Ushio signing off. And hopefully I'll see you next time. That was the good ending. What the fuck is that about? Oh my word. <laughs>